Hello friends, welcome to today's class, today's computer organization and architecture class. So I will be handling the rest of the topics and uh, as I had introduced in the introductory class, my name is uh, Vinay Sangoli and uh, I and uh, Niranjan sir will be handling your CO class. So going forward, uh, uh, this is my email ID and mobile number wherein you can contact me for any queries. So till today you have seen your module number 1 and you have seen various aspects and the concepts of computer organization and architecture and I hope you have got a glimpse of what actually is this subject is and uh, you have uh, understood the basics of this subject, you understood the basics of this subject like uh, what is a computer, what is the, what are the different uh, parts of a computer I mean to say what all hardware is involved, what all software is involved and uh, how the bus structure has been arranged, all these things also has been covered in the first in the first module. Apart from that you have also seen the various numerical representations like how do you represent a signed number, how do you represent an unsigned number. You have also seen the memory addressing things like uh, whether it could be a byte addressing, big Indian, small Indian, then what are the memory assignments. Along with that you have also seen various memory operations like uh, to name a few, what are the instructions, what are the instruction sequencing, what is RTN that is register transfer notation and uh, what is uh, ALN which is nothing but assembly language notation. All these things have been covered in the first module. So to move ahead from the first module, there is a small topic in the first module itself wherein uh, we try to discuss between your various uh, computer architectures. Basically it is processor architecture. So here if you want to discuss the processor architecture, first you need to understand what is an instruction. So an instruction is nothing but a command which is given to the processor and uh, using this instruction the processor will carry out n number of operations which could be addition, copying from a memory etc. So like this n number of operations can be carried out with the help of the instruction. So we will try to touch upon this instruction thing. Usually our instruction consists of two parts. One is called as opcode and the other one is called as operand. Okay. So whenever we say of opcode and operand, it is something like that. Like say for example, this is how I represent my whole instruction. Say the red box which I have shown is nothing but your instruction. Then this instruction is divided into two parts. One is your opcode which I am just writing it as OP and the other one is your operand. So this is my operand which I have written as OPER. Okay. Sorry for the unclear things because I am writing it with the help of the mouse. Okay. So what actually is this opcode and operand? Say for example I want to add two things. They say I want to add A and B. Say A plus B. I want to do this thing. Okay. If I want to do A plus B, this A and B are called as your operands. Okay. A and B will come and fall into this operand section and the addition, whatever the plus sign you can see here, this addition will be coming in your opcode section. So therefore, an instruction consists of two things. One is opcode which is what, in what operation you want to do. Other one is operand on what you want to do this addition is nothing but your operand. So if you see the example of one simple example if I say the same addition it would be something like this say A the addition is done with the say I am taking example of any machine language code it is given by ADD the instruction is ADD A that is the first operand comma B. So when I write this instruction when I write this instruction, it is nothing but you are adding two variables or two operands which is A and B and you are using the opcode ADD which is addition. Okay. So I hope this is clear what actually is an instruction. Okay. So I will just erase all the inks. So this is how your instruction is being done. That is your instruction what all consists of. Fine. Now, what actually is this opcode? Opcode usually is very important because based on that you can decide what should be my amount of data. Like say for example, if I if I reserve some 5 bits for opcode, say 
I will say that I have reserved 5 bits for opcode. So if I reserve 5 bits for opcode, it means that I can do the operation somewhere around 2 raised to 5. So I can do the operations of around 2 raised to 5. That is nothing but your 32. So this can be done around 32 operations, not more than that. So therefore, the opcode length, so this opcode length tells us what would be the range of my data. Okay. Now, coming to our operand, operand is nothing but it is data on which the operation is carried out. That's what we saw till now. Okay. So, I hope friends the instruction is clear. Going forward, the next very important thing we need to discuss is about your addressing modes. So, what are these addressing modes? To tell you about the addressing modes, say I have a location A and I want to move to location B, right? Then there are two, th there are two things. What is the simple thing? I hope you might have studied about bus structures. A bus will be running from A to B. A bus will be running from A to B. Now, every bus has again two parts. So, all those details will go into later way. Now, this addressing modes helps us to communicate between your one location to another location. So, these locations can be either your memory locations or these could be your resistors, anything. Or this could be your direct data itself. Even that is possible. So, if I want to move from a location A, to the location B, that is say if I want to move the data from the location A to the location B, then we use our addressing modes. So this is nothing but it is a way of specifying the operands. How do you specify the operands is given with the help of the addressing modes. Okay. Now, to one very important thing regarding your addressing modes is uh, you should be very clear that. These addressing modes tells us how the data could be transferred and based on these addressing modes we will be designing our architecture of the processor which could be one is CISC, the other one is RISC. So these two architectures will be defined based on this addressing modes. So to tell you more to tell you more about this addressing modes or to elaborate more about this addressing modes, say for example I have the number of instructions, the number of instructions n. I have n number of instructions and these n number of instructions now what do you mean by these instructions instructions could be anything like say add i want to add two things it is an instruction or it could be i want to copy say i want to copy two things okay uh, sorry for the unclarity so say i want to copy certain things say I want to copy certain things. So, these are nothing but what now? Our instructions which are given by the n. Now, these instructions, how do you execute these instructions? These instructions are executed in the form of the steps like say the first step is I will be adding, the next step will be I will be copying. So, that steps are given by yes those steps which you perform to implement these instructions n are nothing but yes. Okay, I hope I am clear. N is the number of instructions. Yes is the number of steps. Now, say for example, I have a large value of N. That is, I have more number of instructions and I have less number of steps. That is, I am executing more number of instructions using less number of steps. Let us say I am adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing and then I am also copying with the less number of steps. What happened then? The value of n is more and the value of s is small. Okay. So, that is one aspect or one scenario. The other scenario is say I have an individual instruction but it is performing more complex operations. That is uh, I have I have only one instruction and I say I have only one instructions but which is complex. That is in one instruction I am doing addition, multiplication and subtraction and these all are done with only single step. So I hope you are getting it. I have continuously I have addition I have, then I have a multiplication, then I have some division and so on and so on and all these three steps or, or sorry all these three operations I am doing in a single step, I am doing in a single yes. 
okay so if i do something like this it means that it is the other scenario so i hope i am clear with the two scenarios one is more number of instructions lesser number of steps the other one is again more number of instructions but these are executed in only single step here i am speaking of less instructions here i am speaking of single step right this is one way the other way is say the same thing that is addition multiplication and division and i am using more number of yes that means that my n is also large and my yes is also large this is the third scenario wherein i have more number of instructions as well as i have more number of steps even this we have to dealt with so these all scenarios which i have discussed just now these three scenarios will be dealt with the help of the different addressing modes okay so i hope this is clear now moving ahead one other very important thing is uh, based on these construction instruction sets what are the instruction set we discussed just now the computers are generally categorized into two computers one is risk architecture the other one is cisc architecture one type of architecture we have is risk the other type of architecture we have is cisc risk stands for reduced instruction set computer so i am repeating it once again it stands for reduced instruction set computer whereas cisc stands for complex instruction set computer so r you can remember it is reduced c you can remember it is complex so today's system is just a combination of many of this uh, processors because uh, uh, what whatever the actual design of the processor we have we need to look after n number of uh, trade offs like if i may get a large speed but i will not be having a more processing uh, processing memory something like that so these trade offs has to be taken care of in today's systems now what today's systems do is they take the best of both the architectures that is risk and sys and they will come up with the processor so i hope i am uh, understandable they will not implement a single architecture they will take the best things which is there in sys they will take the best things which is there in risk and then they will go ahead and they will be coming up with the process right so moving ahead so we'll we'll discuss the difference between your risk and six sh uh, shortly before that we'll move ahead with the computer architecture so what is actually is this computer architecture now computer architecture see whenever uh, architecture word at least you might have heard a number of times this architecture word okay so architecture is nothing but uh, i'll to, to tell you a simple example uh, before building any uh, before building any office or before building any home what do you do you design it on a paper or on or nowadays on a 3d machine we try to design it similarly and in in that design what we decide where should be my bedroom where should be my hall where should my uh, pipeline should go where should be my kitchen all these things would be decided in that architecture similarly when we try to build up a computer then we need to decide what should be my processor speed what should be the addressing modes i will be using what should be my memory size all these things will be decided with the help of this computer architecture so you can see here it gives you the details of instruction format now instruction instruction format would be nowadays we have instruction format somewhere around two types of formats we have one is 32 bit and another one is 64 bits so what will have be having now these instruction formats whatever we have it is either it could be a 32 bits or it could be 64 bits earlier days we also we were also having 16 bits we are also having 16 bits so while when you uh, download when you upload your system with the os that is when you install the os into your system you might have find it out that you have a operating system which is of say 32 bits 64 bits and so on so that is nothing but your computer architecture which would be defining you telling you what should be my instruction format instruction set is nothing but what all instruction sets you are using addressing modes again there are n number of addressing modes and you should also decide what should be the size of my address bus the program bus and all those things okay and finally the functional modules there are n number of modules which should be connecting in your architecture all these functions modules what should be my functional modules what should be to name a few your input output module you can take 
what should be my input output module what should be my memory module that all things will be decided with the help of this computer architecture so i hope this architecture is clear now so going ahead i hope the architecture is clear the next very important thing is your organization so what actually is this organization now this organization is nothing but it deals with how the design techniques are implemented so this organization tells you how the design techniques are implemented so that the architecture is fulfilled so this is in real building a system this is designing a system okay i hope i am clear this is building a system this is designing a system so this usually refers to implementation or realization of the architecture especially it is concerned with how you connect the hardware components and how you choose the hardware components what hardware components are to be chosen what what all will be your uh, various components which i have to connect and what should be the size of those components will be decided with the help of the computer organization so friends maybe today's class i will uh, stop here only wherein we have tried to cover between uh, what are your various aspects in your cisc and risc and uh, i have also gave a short glimpse of what all was covered in the module number 1 in the next class i will go ahead and discuss the difference between your cisc and risc architecture uh, thank you for attending today's class if you have any doubts you can call me or email me or whatsapp me on this email id and your phone number okay thank you friends